Today, I'm gonna give you guys five of my best animation tips inside of After Effects to make your graphics and animations just look a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So usually on my channel, I'm covering graphics and templates and stuff and covering very specific things inside of After Effects. But today I figured I'd just do a more broad tutorial about animation and I'd give you five tips to make your animations look a lot cleaner. Most people, when they get into After Effects, they just keyframe something like from here to here and then they just leave it and it looks very bland and there's a lot you can do to make things look a lot cleaner, a lot smoother and a lot nicer. So we're gonna look at that. But before we get into this, I just wanna remind you that I do try to stream every Tuesday and Sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash BravityM. So make sure you jump over there and drop a follow and catch a live stream if you're interested. And then also if you do not own After Effects and you still wanna make some awesome custom stuff, overlays, graphics for your Twitch stream or YouTube channel, make sure you check out my partner link down in the description for placeit.net where you can use their smart templates to customize all kinds of stuff for your streams and your YouTube channel without owning After Effects or any programs. It's incredible. Check out the link in the description. But without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and take a look at these tips. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. I've done nothing. I just opened up the program and then imported my fake logo because we're going to use that for all of our animation tests. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and hit OK, and we'll drag our fake logo in here to begin doing some animation. So if you guys wanted to animate your logo onto the screen from the bottom or something, what most people would do is they'd come down here and hit the drop down drop down the transform, they'd hit the position keyframe, and then maybe zoom in a little bit, and we'll go ahead and uh, move forward maybe like 50 frames. We'll create a keyframe where we want it to be right there, and then we'll move back to the original keyframe and just kind of drag it off screen, and then when you hit play, there is your animation. Now that might be a little bit slow, so let's move it up. And maybe you'd get something like that and you'd think, there we go, I animated my logo coming on screen. But this is unbelievably boring and there's just a couple steps you can do, just a couple tips that I can give you that'll make this look way better. And the first one, I talk about it all the time on this channel is the graph editor for changing the speeds of your keyframes. So what you wanna do is you wanna select both of your keyframes by drawing a box over it, right click and go to keyframe assistant and then drop on easy ease and you'll see it creates these little hourglasses and if you select those hourglasses and then click on this button up here, this is the graph editor, you can see we've got the speed graph here. And if you don't see this graph, you can right click and make sure you go to edit speed graph. So once you're in the speed graph, you can click on these and you can move these nodes around and you can create some crazy like weird keyframe speed changes and whatnot it's incredible so what I like to do is I like to grab this little leg here and I like to drag it this way so the keyframe starts fast and then you can see it slows out it slows towards the end of the animation and is really fast at the beginning so if we go out of the graph editor and we play it now you'll see we've got a much more dynamic move it zooms in and then it slows down as it comes in this is already looking way better than before. Let me go ahead and Command Z a couple times. This is what it looked like. Very bland. And then we just select them. Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease, Graph Editor, grab this leg, drag it in, and boom, we've got a much more dynamic looking animation and way better. And if you take this leg and you drag it back and drag it the other way, you can see you can have it start out slow and move fast or you can do it the way I did it, the way I prefer it, where it starts out fast and then goes slow. So whenever something is coming into screen, I like it to go fast and then slow down, but when something's leaving the screen, if you're animating it out, I like to start slow and then zoom it out really quickly. So this is how I want it for whenever it's coming in, and you see that looks incredible. So there's tip one to make this look better. Tip two is just hitting two buttons, two buttons that's gonna make this look a lot better. So as you can see, this is looking pretty cool, but if you hit this little button right here, this will enable your motion blur for the composition. And then if you come down here to these switches right here, if you do not see these, you can go to right click on this little column here, open up columns and turn on switches. And then you'll see this little matching icon here, select the box of your layer. And now you will have motion blur. So as you can see, when it comes in, look at that logo. It's all blurry now, and it's moving like it would move in the real world. It's got blur when it moves. It makes it look like it's going fast. So let's go ahead and play this now. And as you can see, it just adds a little bit of a subtle blur to it as it moves in. Makes it look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, and a lot more realistic. Now, 
Tip number three is something that will vastly improve the look of your animations, and that's adding just at least one more keyframe onto either scale or rotation or opacity, just something else to add to it so it's not just position coming in. So right now we've just got the position keyframed. Why don't we just add something like rotation? So we'll go to the keyframe at the same point where the position starts, and we'll start keyframing our rotation, keyframing our rotation. That was kind of hard to say. And then we'll move forward to where the end is, and we'll put another keyframe for our rotation. We want it to end like this, and then we'll make our way back to the beginning, and we'll just rotate the crap out of it, just like this. And then when you'll see when it comes in, it's rotating, but it looks a little strange. It kind of sits there and spins at the end, and that's because we've got the keyframe speed graph edited on the position, but not on the rotation, so they don't line up. So let's go ahead and select our keyframes like we did before, keyframe assistant, easy ease, make sure they're selected, go into the graph editor, and apply the same shape to our rotation. And then here we go. As you can see, that just added so much dynamic movement to our logo. It looks so much cleaner, it looks so much nicer, and so much more like we put a lot more time into the animation. It just looks way cooler when you add just one more thing, opacity, rotation, position, just combine a couple and it'll look really cool. But there's now one more thing that we can add to this that's going to make it look way better when it's coming in and that is adding inertial bounce. Now I've covered inertial bounce I believe once on my channel before because it can get a little bit advanced and it may seem advanced but if you just follow what I'm about to do step by step, I promise it is simple. So inertial bounce just means in Instead of your animation just stopping, when it stops, it's going to like bounce back and forth. Like instead of just coming like, it goes like that. And it looks way more realistic, like it had a lot of speed and it's slowing down and just kind of bouncing back and forth. So the way you're gonna do that is all using expressions. So I wanna do it on the rotation because it comes in rotating like this. And I think it'd be pretty cool if the rotation just sat and spun a little bit. Now this is all using expressions, so it's gonna do it automatically. So if you want a more extreme look, we can actually speed up our animation. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit in preparation for this. So I think that's pretty good, maybe a little bit faster. So as you can see, our animation is a lot quicker. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to do, go over to the stopwatch by the rotation keyframes, and we're gonna hold down Alt on our keyboard, and we're just gonna click on the stopwatch. This is going to open up the expressions. Things are gonna start turning red, drop downs are gonna appear, text boxes are gonna appear. Do not panic. I got you. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna come down here to this text box that have popped up in your layers. You're gonna select everything and you're going to hit paste. Assuming that you have gone down to the description and copied the expression that I have down for you in the description. That expression is for inertial bounce. If you do want to get it yourself without coming back to this video, you can just Google inertial bounce. And I believe there's a website called Gray Machine, I believe is what it's called. And you can just copy the expression from there. They give you After Effects expressions. Or if you just want to come back to this video every time, link in the description description, not a link in the description, copy in the description. You can just copy that entire expression and then just paste it in here and you should be good to go. Depending on what scale you're working at and how big your composition is, it could look great just throwing it on. But as you can see, ours doesn't really do much. It does a little bit when it comes in. So we've got to mess with these three parameters here, amplitude, frequency, and decay. Decay is how long the animation lasts. The frequency is how quickly it moves and the amplitude is how much it moves. So we're going to mess with the amp line mostly. The frequency and the decay are normally pretty set. Our amp is unbelievably low at 0.1. I'm gonna move it all the way up to like three and we're gonna see what that looks like. So now if we play it, that is a little much. So let's go ahead and bring it down to two. And there we go. Look at that. That looks incredible. Let's go ahead and move up all of our drop downs here. All we did, remember, is we came down to our rotation, hit Alt on the stopwatch, and it brought up this little text box. We pasted the expression that you can get down in the description, changed the amp line from 0.1 to 2, and now it looks like this. As you can see, when it rotates in, it bounces a little bit, and we've got a much more dynamic looking animation now. Remember what it looked like before? Now we've got speed graph edited, we've got some motion blur, we've got some rotation, we've got some inertial bounds. Now we're starting to get into some nice advanced looking animation. This is way nicer than just having your logo come onto screen, just boop, boop, point A to point B. But it is time for the final tip, and that is just for whenever you're animating your logo out, something that I like to do. So let's say you want your logo to then come back down out of frame after it's been on for a little bit. So let's say right here, we just want our logo to come down. So we're gonna hit the keyframe for the position again. We're gonna move forward a little bit. 
and we're just going to drop it out of frame. And remember what I said at the beginning, when you do the speed graphs, I'm going to go ahead and hold this right here or select these right here, go to the speed graph. And I said, I like it to go fast and slow when it's coming in, but I like it to go slow then fast when it's coming out. So we're going to edit that real quick. So make sure we bring this one back here, quit moving the anchor point. There we go. And then we're going to move this this way. So it goes slow and then it goes fast. So now go out of our speed graph here, zoom out again, and now you'll see it goes slow and then fast. So comes in fast, then slow, goes out slow, then fast. But that is not the tip. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. The tip is I like to add a little bit of an animation before the exit animation to give it kind of some motivation to go out of screen. So you'll see, see, wow, I just had a tongue tie. You'll see it just goes out of the screen. It's out of nowhere. But what I want to do is I want to make it go up then down. So we're going to go to right after this first keyframe, we're going to go forward maybe like three frames and we're actually going to move the position up a little bit and then the animation will continue down out of frame. So now it's going to look like this. And now that's a little bit fast. So we're going to move this one out a little bit, move this one down a little bit. And there we go. Maybe a little bit slower one more time. Move this one again as well. So now you can see it adds a little bit more of a dynamic look to it when you kind of give it motivation, like it's going hoo, hoo, like it has to build up speed to go out like it's jumping like hoo, and then it goes down. So let's go ahead and play its animation all together. We've got an awesome inertial bounds, rotation, motion blur, keyframe assistance, the speed graph editing, some motivation at the end to bounce up and out of frame. And there is a full blown logo animation coming on screen. Let's add a solid behind it and really make this look exciting. Let's add a nice like dark gray solid boom Add it at the bottom. There we go. Beautiful. Looks like we got a real logo animation for the intro to our YouTube videos or something. There you go. There's some awesome tips to make your animations look a lot cleaner and a lot more dynamic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys take these tips to animate your own things. This does not just apply to logos. Think when like social media icons pop up at the bottom, you could have your social media pop up and just inertial bounce. You could take any template that I've already created, go in and add the inertial bounce to it, add all these kinds of tips to all your animations, logos coming in, your stinger transitions could have some inertial bounce that could be a little weird but add some motion blur add some keyframe uh, speed graph editors all kinds of stuff but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget i do try to stream every tuesday and sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash gravity and i hope you guys enjoyed this more broad kind of tutorial of after effects i know a lot of people have been wanting stuff like this so let me know what you think by hitting the like button and leaving a comment and i'll see you guys in the next video adding another thing motion blur keyframe assistant I can't remember the last tip. What is the last tip that I was going to give? Oh my god, what's the last tip? Ah, yes, yes. But